Welcome to ECA Limo Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed some of the applications of concave mirrors and we said one of it was used as a mirror behind the projector lamps where the lamp is placed at the center of curvature. We also discussed as used as shaving mirrors and dentist mirrors and in this case, the object is placed between the focal point and the pole and in that case they produce upright and magnified image now in this lesson we are going to discuss some of the applications of convex mirrors my name is albert i hope you will enjoy the lesson by the end of this lesson i expect you to be able to explain at least two uh, applications of convex mirrors, explain some of the advantages of convex mirrors, and then finally state the limitations of using convex mirrors. So one of the applications and most commonly used is that they are used as cars and motorcycle side mirrors. All of you know side mirrors of a motorbike or a car and they are used because they form an upright image and they have a wide field of view so in this case i can draw a diagram here to represent an upright image and a wide field of view in this case for concave for convex mirrors we say they look like this so in this case if we have the principal focus or the principal axis from this point here like that, that is the principal axis of this mirror. Then we see the, the inner part is the one which is silvered and then the outer one is polished. So this is the reflecting surface in front here. This is the front of that mirror and this is back of the mirror. So in this case, we said the focal point is behind the mirror and then see all the center of coverage is also behind the mirror. So if this is the pole, and you have an object at end point here this object is going to be formed behind the mirror and this object is going to be upright so if you have the object which is upright here or a car approaching this car with our side mirror here so if you draw two rays which we discussed earlier a ray which is close and parallel to the principal axis it will appear as if it was emerging from the focal point like this one here so this ray will be reflected but it will appear as if it was coming from f another ray that we can use is a ray from the tip of the object and appearing to pass through c this ray will be reflected along its own path so in this case this ray will appear as if it was coming from c and this ray will be reflected along its own path like that so in this case, an image will be formed and this image now is always upright and it's smaller than the object. However, we are going to see that as an, a disadvantage. Now, for that is for formation of upright images. It's used as a mirror because it produces an upright image. However, this e mirror, they are also used because they have what we call a wide field of view. Wide field of view, it means they can view objects which are at any point where this mirror interacts with. If there's an object at this point below here, then it can be formed inside this mirror. And if you have another uh, object at this point here, it can be formed in this mirror. Since when these rays come into this mirror like this, they will get reflected to this point like that. If this ray comes to the mirror like this, it will get reflected to this point like that. And even if you have another one here, so long as the array can travel in a straight line and hit the, this part of the reflecting surface, it will be reflected towards this point here. So this is what we call, it has a, a very wide field of view. It can be used to, to observe objects which are at different angles away from this mirror. So this is what we call a very wide field of view. It can view objects from this point to this point here. Then another application is that this used in supermarkets. 
to monitor movement of customers because they form upright images and they also have a very wide field of view. And in this case, I want to explain in terms of wide field of view now. So let's say we have a supermarket room like this. If this is the supermarket room, like this one here, I'm going to draw just a sketch of a supermarket room. This is a supermarket room, and this mirror is placed at this point here. This is our mirror at that point. So if this mirror is placed at that corner, a person who is here is able to see anything. He's able to see any person who will be at this point here because light can travel. Let's say we have three people. One person is here, another person is here, another person is here. The light can travel from this person to the mirror and then get reflected to this observer who is down here. This is the observer here. So this light can be can, can bounce through that mirror to this point here. Then this other person here, light will go from this person to the mirror and then it will travel to this observer here. Then from down here, still the light will move to the mirror and then it will get reflected to this person here. Now the ability of these mirrors to observe or to observe objects at a very wide field is what makes it possible for it to be used as supermarket mirrors because they form upright images and also they have a very wide field of view. So this is what we call a wide field of view. So we have two main advantages of convex mirrors. The first one is that convex mirrors form upright images. In this case, it is an advantage as compared to concave mirror because concave mirrors only produce inverted images except when the object is between the pole and the principal focus. Another, adva another advantage of convex mirror is that they have a very wide field of view and in this case, when we talk about a field of view, it is the angle at which they can focus objects to form images of those objects in that mirror. In this case, we will have, we will compare this with a plain mirror. So this is a plain mirror. And then we will have a convex mirror here. So for a plain mirror, if you have a plain mirror like this one here, it can only see or be used to observe objects which are in front here. So it can only observe objects which are at an angle of 180. If you extend this angle to this point and you have an object here, light cannot travel along corners for it to be seen in this mirror. So in this case, it has a very small, a very small field of view. Then for a con convex mirror, remember we said this convex mirror looks like this. It's a curve which is cut from a sphere. So if you have a convex mirror like this, therefore it means for, for a plane mirror, it could only focus 180. But in this case, it can extend from 180, this 180. It can extend some angles behind here, like 40 degrees and then it can extend an angle here like 40 degrees in such a way that if you have an object here it will still be formed in this mirror and if you have an object here so long as light from that object hits the mirror it can be reflected in that case so in this case you will realize it is going to cover a, a, an angle of more than 180 plus 80 is going to be about uh, 260 degrees, which is a very wide angle in this case. So we also have some of the disadvantages of convex mirrors. And one of the disadvantages of convex mirrors is that convex mirrors form diminished images, very small images, giving an impression that the vehicle behind are further away than they actually are. So here a vehicle can be approaching you but this mirror is going to show you that the, that vehicle is very far. 
and that can cause accidents easily. So in this case, this is a very uh, serious disadvantage of convex mirrors. So that will mark the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss spherical abrasion.